20. That's the number of bomb threats that were called into Jewish institutions in our communities across the country yesterday. In one day, in Alabama, in Delaware, in Michigan, in Maryland, in Virginia, in my home state of Hawaii at Temple Emmanuel, where I grew up and was bar mitzvahed. No one wants to be the parent who picks up the phone and finds out that they need to pick their child up from school because people are threatening violence, and all because of their faith. Since 2017 began, nearly 100 bomb threats have been called into Jewish schools and Jewish community centers. It sounds like it's from another time. But this is what rising anti-Semitism looks like in our country. Granted, we knew weird stuff was happening. Pepe, David Duke. This is not normal America. But now the threat of violence is real. And it is coming through the phone lines of American schools every day, and it is loud and clear. This rising threat demands leadership. It demands that we regularly and quickly denounce anti-Semitism and do everything that we can do to stop it from growing. But that is not what we've seen so far from this administration. Now, the baseline expectation of an unequivocal, quick, and regular disavowal of rising anti-Semitic or anti-Muslim rhetoric from the leader of the free world is no longer being met. Instead, we have to extract it from the administration. We have to ask for it. When it doesn't come, we have to ask when it's coming. And what is even more sad is that this administration has avoided any opportunity, even the easy ones, even the most obvious ones, to stand against anti-Semitism. Just over a month ago, the world marked International Holocaust Remembrance Day. And the White House put out a statement without a single mention of the six million Jews who were killed in the Holocaust. Now here's a crazy thing. The first draft mentioned Jews. The State Department drafted the initial statement which mentioned Jews like every Holocaust Remembrance Day statement before it did. And then it went to the White House where someone thought, let's make edits. Let's remove mention of Jews from a statement about Holocaust Remembrance Day. This was someone's decision. It was an intentional decision. Now, who would decide that? And why would that be done? Why remove mention of Jews? It's like mentioning slavery and not mentioning African Americans. It's like mentioning internment and not mentioning Japanese Americans. When you are talking about genocide, it is not irrelevant to talk about who did it and to whom. It is a requirement. But the White House didn't mention Jews and it didn't apologize when people were rightfully confused. And only now that violence has been unleashed, that Jewish cemeteries are being desecrated, that people's children are being threatened on a daily basis, only now are we seeing the minimum from the White House to recognize the rise of anti-Semitic sentiment and actions. And I am worried. And so local communities have taken it upon themselves to lead the way and stand up together. This is what leadership looks like. It looks like Muslim Americans showing up to cemeteries to help to restore Jewish headstones. It looks like local police raising money and people taking time to hold a vigil in solidarity with their Jewish neighbors. There have been far too many bystanders to the increasing anti-Semitism across the country. It is long past time to break the silence and to make it utterly clear that the United States is not a place for hate. It is un-American to hate Jews or Muslims or strangers in the midst. That is not who we are or what we stand for. That is not the United States of America. This week, as Jewish communities are reviewing bomb threat guidance and looking at best practices for security, it's up to all of us to take action and to do everything we can to beat back rising anti-Semitism.